Hello survivors and welcome to another Walking Dead Road to Survival video. Now I have had some requests on how to build Slater because he was given away obviously in the July 4th event. A lot of people have got him in their roster now so there are some people who just want to know how to kind of build him. I would build him basically like any other command and I will go through that. There are different levels of investment that you can do on him in terms of your resources. You can just do like basic Slater and a bit more of an advanced version when it mainly it comes to the weapon, the amount of investment you want to do there pretty much. So Slater as a six star is a very good character but obviously in the S-Class era, he's going to struggle a little bit just because his stats are not that great. Fortunately, he doesn't really rely on his stats to do much except stay alive, and that's generally the easiest thing to mod in the S-Class era is just survivability versus actually having to like mod attack. That just doesn't work with six stars pretty much. When it comes to what I would upgrade between his rush and his active, I would 100% max out his active regardless of if you're gonna use him on an attack team or a defense team. Revive actives are super strong. It has got an initial cooldown of three, so it's not real quick, but it has a cooldown of two, and it can pick up any character that hasn't got 100% heal reduction or hasn't been decapped, so that's absolutely great. When I did use him, I used him in, in combination with Arav, and Arav used to run into characters like Angel all the time, get exhausted, be taken down automatically when I did the rush. I would maybe take out two characters, but he would obviously be taken down by the exhaust damage. Right now you can see that Arav is exhausted. 500 exhaust from Angel will be enough to take him out when he rushes. Basically for every 10% of AP a character takes, they will gain that much exhaust damage and he will take 5,000 damage. He's only got 4,000 HP. I'm going to rush Ivan Nova. He will take himself out in the process, but because of the active of Slater, I can just swipe to the left and it picks Arav up instantly. I could have done the rush as well if I so wished and done it that way. It doesn't matter too much. Either way, I'm going to be able to pick him up and the next turn I will be able to obviously win because I will have Arav be able to rush without having exhaust and take out the last enemy. Now the rush on the other hand is pretty much down to you. If you think it's worth doing, if you've got a lot of Liliths, you could think it's worth doing. I didn't do the rush that often with him. He does get taken out quite a lot. You know, obviously he is a six star, so he can get taken out just by like a double attack from a Priya. But if he does do his rush, it's quite useful. I did find it useful against teams with, for instance, Aaron leads, just because it's actually got a bleed on there. It's a, quite a long lasting bleed as well. 2,500 total damage over those five turns. The focus is a nice little bonus. And obviously there's another revive on there as well. So it's up to you, completely up to you whether you want to go here or not. And it's just based on the fact that he cannot get any better as a six star. Is it worth investing that Lilith? It really comes down to how many Liliths you've got pretty much. Now when it comes to his combat mods, basically you want his combat mods and his weapon to reflect his overall stats in terms of just balancing the HP and defense. When you fully upgrade his weapon, depending on how you decide to go, we'll talk about that in a minute. But if he's got much more HP than he has defense, you want to give him a little bit more defense in his mods than you give him HP. That's basically how to do it. In terms of the set bonus, you can decide which one to go forth with that. At the moment, it looks like he's got a little bit more defense than HP, so we're going to go with HP set bonus. But when he's fully maxed out, weapon, everything like that, you may have it slightly different for you. So we're going to go with HP mod on HP set in the top left hand corner. And in the top right hand corner, we are going to go with defense versus fast. This is primarily if you're going to use him on a defense team as well he's not gonna last a long time on defense team but he is effectively a target like a main target on a defense team because he enables s-class characters to rush a turn earlier so he may get focused but he will generally be an easy focus unless you upgrade his weapon however if you are primarily going to use him on an attack team you could say to yourself i'm only going to be using him against mercer and pete teams and you might want to do a defense against tough here because there are generally quite a lot of heavy hitting tough characters on defense teams but you can't really go wrong with defense versus fast the bottom right hand corner with the resist primarily comes down to the type of teams you think you're going to be attacking if you are going to be attacking mercer teams you definitely have to have a stun resist in here if you are going to be primarily using him on defense rather than attack i would say taunt resist does work better than stun resist just because the first turn control potential a lot of people have doc stevens now 
Stopping someone from taunting this guy makes it so he can actually command someone still. However, for this one, we're going to be using stun resist just because we are primarily gearing him towards being an attacking command. Now, the bottom left hand corner, there's not many ways you can go here. AP drain, he's not going to basic attack too often. Bleed and burn, the same sort of situation. So you might want to go with something like graze, where when he does get attacked, it will just reduce the amount of incoming damage he's going to receive. Now, with the wild card slot, as you can see, his HP has now been massively boosted. It will get boosted slightly more as well because he's going to get a bit more with the set bonus very soon you'll get another 145 hp from the set bonus so if you're going to use on an attack team you might want to just go all in on the stats make it so that he gets a bit more defense and that could be a good way to go if you want to double down on resist it's up to you but obviously the difference between an s class and a six star s class is generally good to double down on resists on defense teams and so on just because they have some such high stats as it is resist is generally going to be the better payoff whereas slate is not really going to stay alive very well unless he has the heavy stats and that's going to be the way we're going to go in this little guide so after doing the full mods you can see that his stats now go to over 3k on the defense and hp this is without a leader skill and he's primarily going to be used on attack, so he's not going to be getting a boost to his defense and HP anyway. However, he will be getting a boost from his weapon. Now, Slater's base weapon comes with 30% HP, 15% defense, and death down when being attacked, a better chance to cause minus 35% defense for three turns to the enemy. Now, there's two ways you can upgrade this guy's weapon. You can add 30% defense instead of 15% defense upgrade both hp and defense to 35 percent each or upgrade one of them to 40 whichever one you choose or you could try and go for an impair on this weapon basically this is the the thing i talked about at the beginning in terms of the different levels of investment you can do on this character one's going to be very easy to get to hp defense upgrades is not going to be that hard whereas an, an impair or an elusive impair could legitimately take weeks maybe months and by that point it could be pretty much obsolete in your roster it really depends on where you are in the game and how much resources you have to spare and how lucky you're really feeling at the end of the day now you could max out his weapon as a four star and decide to five star his weapon but realistically that's a lot of armory tokens to use on an attached weapon for slater again it's completely up to you it's completely up to your armory token situation and it is down to whether you think you're going to be using this guy for a long time or not personally i would recommend not doing that just upgrading the hp and defense to around about 35 to 40 percent each and if you do that with 30 percent bonus on both of those stats you get over 4k defense and 4k hp so you'll get a little bit more if you decide to go for 10% on one of these or 35%. Obviously, I just did one upgrade just to show you the minimums here. And this is really good. I think this is a good minimum. 4k defense and HP means he's going to have quite good survivability on an attack team. He's got around about the same defensive stats as an S-class character. And generally speaking, S-class characters are not going to have a defensive stat boost on attack. So here's just some gameplay of how I basically use Slater on my attack team. You can actually see I'm coming up against a Slater on a defense team. And the primary, primary usage is just for him to actually enable other characters to get things off faster. You see, I used his command, and you do that by defending. And the last character that actually took a turn will get a second turn. If you do Doc Stevens active turn one, you can obviously defend with Slater. He gets his turn again. You can get people's rushes nice and quick with the combos, and that's nice. As you can see, we have got a turn two rush on Priya Guaranteed. Arrows one was obviously down to whether he um, got the procs from Dr. Stevens' weapons, and that's how it works. That's how it works. Now, the, the other bonus from obviously having this character is the fact that he can command other characters to get their rush this turn. That's the that's the good one. As you can see, we can attack Princess, and now I can command Princess to be able to take out that line of characters. And that's what a command's job basically is. So that's pretty much it for Slater in terms of what he's capable of and how I would build him. I would primarily use him on an, an attack team, on a defense team, he's only going to be a problem if you've got a team that can actually rush quickly. If you don't have a team that can rush quickly, he's mostly going to be an easy target for an attack team. I would work towards S-Class Rick if you do want to use a command on a defense. But for now, Slater's actually a pretty decent filler otherwise. Be careful of how much you invest in him though, in terms of your resources, things like veteran rings. 
your armory upgrades, as he has very limited longevity because he is a six star character. I hope this video has been useful for you guys. If there are any other characters that pop up in the future that you want me to go over, do let me know. I will try and work through characters. I have got a bit of a backlog right now. That is the end of my video. Thank you very much for tuning in. And as always, keep on surviving, guys. Keep on surviving.